So today's victim is uh, Aisha. So last, although she, she was running okay at higher speeds, uh, last time I ran her, um, at low speeds um, on slightly more um, uh, gradient parts of the, or higher gradient parts of the track, the it was struggling a little bit. Um, and what I noticed um, when I took the cylinders off last time was that the piston rings were very, very loose in the balls, um, which suggests to me that the piston rings are have worn. Um, the piston rings are cast iron, which is quite nice, um, as, as are the cylinders. Um, but what I've decided to do is, is um, somebody, has, somebody at the club actually gifted some PTFE so I'm going to try have, try my hand at making PTFE piston rings so I'm going to whip these off and uh, I'll, I'll show you what I'm going to do I've downloaded some um, instructions from uh, my friend John Bagley's website so he he um, built an award-winning loco called Helen Longish um, can give you the, the, the web web the web page. Um, and he explains in quite a bit of detail how to go about making PTFE piston rings. So I'm, I'm just basically I'm not going to make anything up. I'm just going to borrow basically do exactly what John did, and hopefully we'll have some success. So um, first job is to take the cylinder assembly off. The cylinder is cast iron, as as are the, the, the piston rings. I'm not sure if you can, can see there. Uh, but there is some there is some corrosion and there's moisture in the cylinder, so I've um, stripped stripped the cylinder assembly down. Um, what I've noticed, I've noticed a couple of things. So um, I've cleaned it, cleaned it up as best I can, but the um, the bore in here had, did have some surface rust on it. Um, I think the reason for that is is that on the top of the cylinder uh, there's this access port which sits with a little cover on it. And on locos I've had in the past, which have cast iron cylinders, um, you always want some way of getting some WD-40 or something inside the cylinder after you've run. You know, quick squirt and then run it up and down a few times to clean all the water um, out, out of the cylinder. Um, so it doesn't go rusty. Unfortunately, this, this has had quite a bit of rust. Um, I cleaned it up with some emery, but... Um, especially at this end, you can feel there's um, it's quite rough, and the ring the rings aren't particularly tight. In fact, they're quite you know there they don't seem to be a lot of um, yeah. It's, it feels to me like they've worn worn quite a bit because of that that um, that rust pitting. But the thing I've noticed is on the the this cylinder end cap. There's no, there's no cutout. You'd no, you would normally have a cutout in the end cap just to uh, give a bit more space for the, the steam to come into the cylinder. Um, not sure, again, I'm not sure if you can see, but there is on on this end cap, but not on this one. So um, that might be something. Uh, perhaps just mill a small slot in there just to improve the breathing slightly. So I need to do three things. Um, I'm going to replace these cast iron piston rings with a PTFE. I'm going to drill and tap this boss um, for uh, whatever size bolt I can actually get in there. Um, and then I'll have to just, just um, drill a hole in, in the running board so we can take that out with a screwdriver. And the final thing is to, to mill a slot in, in this end cover, just so that 
the cylinder breathe, breathes a lot a bit better. As you probably saw, I managed to break not one but two uh, of the piston rings, the cast iron piston rings. They're very brittle, so I'm not going to cry about it. Um, I've measured the piston and the bore. The bore seems to be almost exactly 19 mil. Uh, the piston's very slightly smaller. Um, I've measured the the depth of or the diameter across the bottom of the rings, 16.6, and the the width of the slots is um, 1.67 mil. So um, what we need to make out PTFE is probably slightly oversized, 19 mil diameter on the outside, and on the inside we need to. Um, I think John said 15 thou off, so um, so that's 0.39 of a mil, so I've just rounded that up to 17 mil, because it may have a 17 mil um, drill, so that'd be good. So there's a bit of expansion room so that the, the ring can grow laterally. Uh, and then the, the width of the ring is 1.55 mil, so again, there's a, it's basically the, the width of the slot and less than 0.12 mil, which is five thou, again, following what John said. And then he said, um, cut a slot um, up 10 thou, which that's what we're aiming for. And uh, we'll try and get some action shots on the lathe. Close enough. I think that should just be the right size, so final thing is to draw through 17. I haven't got a 17 mil, but I have got a 4364 fourths, that well known size. A little bit too big. So it's actually too big just to go in the slot and it should actually be a bit too small. So that's no good. Um, I think what I'll do is I should carry on drilling, drilling through and through and then I'll try parting off, see how, how that works. Um, that's, that's coping quite well drilling full full depth it just needs something to clear the um, tip of the, the drill this the flat there all right i'm going with a five mil uh, try that okay i'll save this ptfe because it's uh, can be quite good for packing so now we will see just how sharp We've made that. We've made this um blade, this part enough blade, and whether it will be sharp enough. What we want is one point five five. 
So I'll try 1.5 and just uh, see how that goes. I think I might lock the carriage as well. That's something I'm a bit naughty about not always doing when I part off. So I'll just pop Close enough. It uh, seems to have gone a bit large. Now I've deburred it, not too bad. What I can do is, is just slide it over some emery paper just to give us the clearance we need. But that looks pretty good. Who's going to be happy with that? Let's do another one. Okay, so what I've got this ring here, which is the thinner of the two, in the in the wider of the the two um, slots. And I need this is a five thou feeler gauge, um, and that just that just fits in nicely. Uh, I hope you can see that. So that's great for the for this end. Um, this one I need to thin up slightly. It's 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 a nice fit in the slot, but there's no clearance. I can't get the feeler gauge in as well, so I'll um use a bit use a bit of emery and just very gently uh, thin it out. It doesn't need much, just about five thou. Not the easiest thing to hold. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I think I think that'll do. So our next job is to split them. So I'll get uh, actually I've got a, a nice sharp new blade here. So initially I'm just gonna that's the different so I'm just gonna pop that one on for now. That's it, opens and closes there. So this is the one for this side. I'll just literally put a split in and just see how that fits in the ball. Okay, that's good. Let's see if it will go in the ball as is. Okay, so at the, at the moment it's overlapping. Ring gap was ten thou. So it's double double that size. So I think I'll uh, just do it by eye. Just take off a very tiny sliver. So, okay, so it's still a bit of an overlap. Let's take two now. Let's try and take that out. Hundred and eighty degree hundred and eighty degrees apart. Try popping that in. So it's freeing up. That does feel a little bit tight there. So the acid test really for PTFE rings is um, is to dunk uh, the whole assembly into boiling water. So I shall. That's just boiled. Um, I shall let that heat soak. So it's um, the whole thing's got up to hopefully close to uh, 100 degrees centigrade, and then we'll see if if the piston will still move. Um, obviously, the PTFE expands quite a lot with heat, so if it still moves after we've got it all up to a nice hot temperature, um, then we know it will be fine uh, with steam and it won't jam. Um, which is always the, the, the slight risk with PTFE is that you, you don't leave enough clearance and it will expand and then just jam the piston. So, OK, so this has been soaking in um, boiling water for about 10 minutes. 
And actually, well, the water has made it actually much looser. Oh, that's good then. So that's that's actually running a lot better than um, when it was cold. So I think uh, I think we're on to a winner there. Okay, so I'm now going to mill us a slot in just to give the steam a, a bit more of a chance to get into the cylinder. Okay, I think that will do. It's about uh, one and a half mil, so I think that should be perfect. There we go, that's that cylinder assembly done. This is basically what this access holds for. It's just to um, so you can get rid of any water that's in the cylinder after running. So you give it a squirt and then push the loco up and down the track a few times, and that should be nice and uh, water-free. So I just need a hole roughly in the centre of this boss. So I'm just going to. Um, this is about the same size. The centre finder, so this edge finder, rather. I'm just going to use that as a guide. That looks pretty much centred now. Okay, that's um, a 4 mil hole, so we're tapping 8BA, at 2BA rather. I remember to put it back in forward. <laughs> I've done that before. Okay. So we've got a nice, nice 2BA threaded hole in there, so I need to deburr that. So I've sh shortened this 2BA screw. It's a council one at the moment. Um, we don't... Uh, so that looks pretty ugly. What, what I'll do in the future is I'll, I'll make um, a custom um, screw for that that will Perhaps maybe looks like an oiler, something like that. Ideally, it wants to be sort of something you can actually um, get your get your hands on. So maybe a knurled nut. Um, I'll have to think about that, and perhaps I'll try and make an ornate top for it in the future. I'll do that. I've now done everything I need to do on this side, so I'll reassemble it. I'll put you on time lapse for that. Turn turn the loco over, and I'll do it again the other side. Anyway, I'm pretty pleased with that. It, it seems to turn over really smoothly. Um, I'm going to do the other side now. Uh, I won't do that on camera, but hopefully that's interesting. Um, like, share, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.